Yeah, Repi. It's going to be on the final exam. R-E-P-I. <laughs> and so is Susie Fong. She's going to be in the final exam, too, here on the military in Hawaii. Um, and we're going to talk about Repi in Hawaii and talk about the Navy Repi Project um, to train, test, operate, and conserve land. It's about land. It's about the military. It's a combination of things. All good. Hi, Susie. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, tell us about REPI. Tell us what you do for REPI, and then we'll drill down and, and find out how it works. Okay, get ready because it's a mouthful. Okay. So REPI stands for the Readiness and Environmental Protection Integration Program. And it was established in 2003 by Congress in efforts to sustain the long-term operations of the military mission, which includes testing, training, um, training capabilities um, through the keyword is partnerships and uh, cooperative land use planning around the installation. Um, this essentially reduces the military community um, and environmental conflicts, which can arise with urban sprawl that typically occurs and development that occurs outside of the installation or the bases. Um, since then, the program has really grown and expanded, and it now includes opportunities for off-base projects that address and aid in insulation resiliency in response to climate change and um, extreme weather events, and also to restore um, habitats that are located off-base as well. Mm -hmm. So what do you yeah. do? What do you do for Repi? So I function as the Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam Repi program manager. So um, I'm the program manager at the local level. So I sit at the base uh, um, typically, and um, it's one of the tools that I have in my tool belt. Tool belt. Um, I also wear the hat of the community planning liaison officer in which I manage the land use and activities that occur outside of the base or fence line. Um, but I really like to think of myself as a partnership builder um, in which I'm seeking ways to build partnerships um, amongst the Navy um, and other agencies for mutually beneficial opportunities. So um, your geographical concern is the area around the joint base. It's not, for example, Pohakaloa. No, not for a joint base. Um, the Army may have an interest um, in, you know, enacting the RUPI program at PTA, but for joint base, it would be lands um, that are affecting joint base operations. So that's your area of, of activity yes. around, around the joint base. Right. So why was this uh, thing adopted in 2003? Why? What was the original purpose of the statute? So they needed a way to make sure that the military operations were going to um, essentially be sustained or um, continue in the long run. Um, there's been, you know, obviously the trend of um, bases built and then you start experiencing urban sprawl and development um, outside of the base. Um, and that really isn't some of the land uses that are um, that result from that aren't really compatible with um, the operations that occur and the mission of the military. So um, they're looking for ways to seek compatibility um, with the military mission. And this all reminds me of why Manu Home Road. Um, I'll tell you the story of why Manu Home Road. You know, there was a home. Uh, for you know, people who had mm, what do you call it, psychological problems, say, at the very top of Waimanu Home Road, you know, and it, and the comment was always like, oh, if you don't behave yourself, you're going to go to the Waimanu Home, right? Um, <clears throat> which was at the top of the road. Okay, it was all by itself. It was miles away from the nearest residential area. Okay, but as as Waimanu grew and Aiea and all that grew. Um, there was development, you know, development crept up the hill 
And and then the neighbors were you know, right on the other side of the fence. And the State Department of Health said, oh, my goodness, you know, they were right on the other side of the fence. And the people on the other side of the fence said, we don't want to be near a, um, you know, a, a, a place like that for people who have you know, psychological problems and the like. And so they began to complain. It's very interesting. They began to complain, even though the Waimanu home was there for, you know, decades and decades and decades before any homes were developed. But it was the same thing, I think, that you're talking about. You get urban sprawl that comes right up to the fence uh, sometimes at the joint base. And, um, you know, the joint base used to be all by itself. You know, there was nobody around. And then as, as the community grew and as residential development grew, all of a sudden there were homes right there on the other side of the fence. Same kind of thing. And so my guess, it's a guess, but I'd like your thought about it. Um, is that you know they 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 started this program because they saw this was a problem, and that people would be on the other side of the fence, and and they would be controversy, and they wanted to head that off at the pass, so to speak, um, and have um, you know a, a, call it a state federal partnership, a public private kind of partnership where somebody looked over what was happening on the other side of the fence and tried to take steps to avoid controversy with the neighbors. Am I right? Yeah, that's pretty spot on. Um, you know, it's it's it goes both ways. Uh, the military obviously can benefit from having um, compatible lands right outside the fence line. And in addition, you know, residents um, at whatnot, you know, they may not want, um, like you mentioned, certain operations or activities to go on outside of the fence and. Um, or right next to their uh, properties. And um, now that there's more, I guess, uh, emphasis on conservation and land stewardship, um, that kind of goes hand in hand in um, what the program is kind of seeking to accomplish because the compatibility with um, preservation lands or recreational lands or open lands in general, um, that's very compatible with uh, the military mission. So. Um, what did you study to get this job? And also, how can how can I get your job? It sounds terrific. Uh, what, <laughs> what, what kind of uh, training did you have to have to be able to handle all the issues that go around the stewardship of land, you know, and the, what do you want to call it, the negotiation of good relationships? Um, I think, you know, a lot of it is just on-the-job training, but uh, my background is actually in urban planning. Um, as well as political science. Um, so I think I've always had an interest in these types of, um, I guess, uh, opportunities and uh, relationship building. So it's it's pretty interesting. Well, you sound like you're perfectly suited for it. Um, you know, and the, the thing about the stewardship of the land suggests that the state either has or should have a, an abiding interest in what you're doing because you can help them. Um, you know, DLNR has to be very interested in what you're doing because, you know, DOD is a big muscle. DOD can help, um, you know, the state and, and for that matter, the county, um, you know, in, in dealing with um, stewardship issues. Uh, am I right about that? How, how deeply involved is DLNR in these discussions? Absolutely. You're spot on with that. Um, DLNR has a very vested interest in land stewardship and preservation for the island of Oahu um, and for the state of Hawaii in general. Um, their whole mission is to protect, conserve, restore, um, and that really aligns very well um, with the Navy mission, um, you know, for that compatible land use. So um, we recently partnered with them on a REPI project, which um, is a definite win-win, I think, for both agencies. Um, so we maintain good relations with them. Uh, we look forward to working with them, and we believe that um, where those mutual benefits and opportunities exist, we will continue to pursue them. Oh, yeah. Well, it's part of your mission, isn't it? I mean, you, you've got to hold hands with the people on the other side of the fence. Uh -huh. Um, it's really important in a, in a place where, you know, people were building right up to the fence and, and where there have been issues over the years, um, you know, I mean, the Navy, 
I'm not saying anything you don't know, but the Navy came to Pearl Harbor in 1850. That was even before I was born. Uh, it was a long time ago. And, and uh, you know, we, we have a, you know, inextricable intertwining of interests between the Navy and the military in general and the community, which we always have to be mindful of. But sometimes we forget, we get into controversies and all that. So the people in 2003 were smart. You know, they realized uh, that, that this phenomenon and was going to go on, is going on, and they had to, you know, keep everything cool. And I think we see some of that popping up in, in the Red Hill water issue. Um, and, and now there's lawsuits about it. And, and, you know, my general reaction, you don't have to tell me yours, but my general reaction is, gee whiz, want, you know, why don't you give the Navy a break? Uh, what is the big, big argument now and lawsuits and everything? Um, the fact is the Navy is protecting the country and and we should be really delighted that they're here at all. Um, so but that's just my feeling about it. I don't I don't think we ought to take um, you know, aggressive legal steps against them. We ought to work with them to the extent possible and understand their situation. So give me an example of a project, a repi project uh, that you would organize um, so I can understand how you put the pieces together. Okay. So I will go into discuss our most recent uh, project, which was the fiscal year 22 uh, Repi Challenge Project. Um, I believe the title was, was um, Expanding Watersheds Above Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. And this project um, is a project in which the Navy partnered with the State of Hawaii, DLNR, Division of Forestry and Wildlife um, with aims to protect and restore um, the Waiawa watershed, which sits above um, Joint Base um, in efforts to- what, what is this picture we're seeing here, Susie? What is this? Okay. This... So this first picture is a picture of um, a destroyed, watershed essentially. So watersheds are typically very green, lush, and thriving, um, which are important because they are home to our aquifers, which supply the potable water for the island. Um, and this picture kind of de uh, depicts that um, the, the incapability of this watershed to effectively capture that groundwater because there's no um, ground cover to essentially absorb that groundwater. And as a result, you're seeing all this soil. Um, and since there's no ground cover, the contaminated runoff and the sediment loads, they just drain right into the harbor since they're, they sit upland. Um, the streams just empty right into Pearl Harbor, um, which you know um, impairs the water quality, um, increases the sediment loads into the harbor, which is not a good thing. And just, you know, it's not good for the island's um, capture of potable water either, so. Yeah, um, well, what would the Corps of Engineers say? Hmm? Well, that's Army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for this particular project, um, I personally wasn't aware of the condition of our watersheds or the direction where our watersheds were headed. So it was unique in that the state came to the Navy um, and presented this opportunity or this project like, hey, we want to highlight, you know, the condition of the watershed. It's essentially broken and it needs fixing. Um, we have a project in mind that, you know, for obvious reasons can benefit DLNR or us, the state. Um, but we also think that you Navy may have a vested interest in this project because it can improve your harbor conditions and the water quality um, for your Navy personnel doing uh, operations in the harbor. So then that kind of got the wheels rolling and we started our conversations um, to formulate um, what we thought would be a strong uh, proposal to compete for REPI funding. Okay, so um, what kind of um, actual work had to be done and who did it and who funded it? Okay, let me just pull up some of my notes here because I wanna ensure I'm capturing everything. Um, so this project was recently awarded 
just uh, I want to say uh, a few weeks ago. So it's still in the process of um, formulating the program objectives and agreements, or what we call the POAM. Um, and it will involve a group of both Navy and DLNR stakeholders to kind of formulate a blueprint um, to ensure that the, the objectives of the project and the milestones are being met. But um, they have to work together then. Right, right. Yeah. And some of the benefits and the objectives that we're seeking for this project is um, increase the quantity and the rate of the groundwater recharge in the Wyalvo, uh, uh, Wyalvo watershed, which would um, increase uh, the potable water supply for the Pearl Harbor aquifer, which supplies water to approximately 60% of Oahu residents. Um, additionally, uh, the project aims to reduce erosion and contaminated runoff that flows into the harbor, um, which helps to ensure the adequate harbor depths for vessel movements. Um, what is this picture we see now? So that is a picture of um, the actual Wayavo watershed. We had the opportunity to go out there and take a look at um, a healthy watershed or what a watershed should look like. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that all this lushness and all this um, healthy native forest, it contributes to essentially um, more water, um, uh, protection of uh, protected habitats of threatened and endangered species and whatnot. So it's really, um, it's really great for just the island and um, people and- uh, where, where is this uh, lush area that we're looking at? Wyalva watershed. So it sits upland of Joint Base. Okay, so we want to have we want to preserve those areas for sure, even though they're at some distance from Joint Base. Absolutely. Um, what people don't realize is that many of these watersheds and the streams located in the watershed they flow into Pearl Harbor. So Pearl Harbor essentially acts as a sink and captures all the runoff from the various types of activities and land uses that occur upland. Um, and, and additionally, oh, sorry. That goes, that goes back to my story about the Waimanu Home Road. You know, when Pearl Harbor was uh, originally developed, you know, there was nobody around, relatively speaking. Uh, and now over the years, it's become a, a very intense, uh, concentrated residential commercial area. And uh, all this, um, you know, I want to call it uh, activity has, has encircled Pearl Harbor. Uh, so Pearl Harbor is kind of like the victim of all of this, and it had very little control over what was being developed around it, and here we are. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I don't want to consider ourselves a victim, <laughs> but um, definitely we are uh, part of the community, and we, we have a vested interest as well in um, preserving the land uh, to the best of our capabilities. So how much money has to be spent uh, on the steps uh, for this particular um, REPI project? Uh, well, it was a large REPI project and um, we were awarded uh, $14.9 million for okay. this particular project. And what, and what actual work is gonna be done you know, with the land, um, you know, involved. Uh, uh, who, who's going to go out and do what uh, to preserve this area? Right. Um, so this project area encompasses a little over 7,000 acres um, in the watershed area, and it's going to entail um, removal of ungulates or um, hooved animals. In this case, it would be the feral pigs, um, which destroy the watershed. Um, it'll also erect three new fences to keep out uh, the pigs from um, destroying additional areas. Um, it will also um, remove invasive um, plants and species and then um, restore the area by doing some native outplanting. And it also entails um, collection of aerial imagery and development of artificial intelligence um, capabilities to capture um, the occurrence of more native species, of more invasive species 
and then um, a, a piece will also entail uh, eradicating the invasive coconut rhinoceros beetle, which is wrecking havoc to the island. Well, I mean, isn't it fair to say you can agree or disagree, but isn't it fair to say without this REPI project, these steps would never have been taken, never? I'd like to think that. Um, <laughs> it, it may have happened, but it, it would have taken, I think, a lot longer and um, it, the scope may have just been broken up. So this is a really efficient way, I think, to capture the needs of, you know, the project. Yeah, I mean, you know, this, this is a combination of actions that, um, you know, maybe, maybe in the decades to follow, maybe one at a time, maybe. Right. But, um, you know, this project is, it's, it's a cumulative um, kind of project with a number of uh, elements in it. And it's, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing. And it's a really good thing for the state of Hawaii, because otherwise, I'm, I'm right when I say it's federal money, right? This fourteen million is all federal money, right? Yes, yes. So with, without without this project, the state would have to find the money, and the you know, state you know would be burdened by that. So this is way better than having to find the money. Is there anybody pushing back on this? I mean, you talk about feral pigs, and I think about pig, pig hunters. Hmm? They love to go out there and hunt pigs, and I wonder how they feel about building fences so they can't hunt the pigs. Are they pushing back? Um, we have not heard much pushback um, for this particular project, but I am aware that, you know, there is a pig hunter association, um, which, you know, may not, you know, like fences all that much, but um, I haven't heard too much pushback on the, on the project. And I, I think in general, it's, it's very much supported. Um, I did want to go back to that piece about the federal funding, um, and I wanted to um, also highlight that the REPI program, it's a cost share. So it's, um, it's a mutually beneficial relationship, um, but the DOD enters into a cost share with its partner, which can be the state or local government agency or conservation organization um, on projects that would be mutually beneficial. Oh, so, so there'd be cost share on this one and, yes. and the, the state or the county or both uh, will, will would kick something in and that, I suppose that has to be negotiated? Yes, so they will be contributing as well. Um, but, you know, uh, the form of contribution can also be um, in the form of staff time or in-kind services. So there's creative ways to kind of lever leverage that contribution piece. Hmm. So there's jobs, there's contractors, am I right? Is, is this uh, 14.9, I think you said, is 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 going to be fed into the Hawaii economy to do the work. Am I right about that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, the work uh, that I've just described in this scope, it'll be done um, by the state of Hawaii, DLNR, DOFA, and who they choose to, I guess, employ uh, to do the work, whether that be in-house or contracted out. So it's, uh, it's, it's their procurement, not yours. Is that right? Yes, they receive the, the funding. Okay, and, and then they go and they follow the procurement code and you know they get people to bid, what have you, and, and get contractors to uh, take parts of the work and get it done. Uh, it, so it becomes a state procurement issue, right? Um, I guess the, all that will be ironed out in the, uh, the POAM or the uh, pro 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 program objectives and agreement uh, memo. Okay, so. so it's all it's all going to be talked about. I like I like that because if you have a federal state, you know, collaborative effort, um, it always works better if you talk to the other government and and work it out, work out the details. So okay, so you know what 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 I get out of this so far. This is really valuable to know about this because I don't I don't know what people really know about this. It's very. Um, very beneficial for the state, obviously, and state government and county government and the watershed. Um, and it's, you know, we, we ought to thank the Navy for doing it. Um, but the Navy also has benefit. And of course, it starts out with better relations, which, you know, that's part of your job as a 
political scientist, I suppose, um, to you know foster better relations and conversations and collaborations. But uh, the other thing you mentioned, which I think is worth mentioning, is that if the runoff gets down into Pearl Harbor, um, it can be a real problem for Navy operations. And um, if this is not done, then the Navy's operations are uh, in the long term, or maybe even in the intermediate term, uh, they would be affected. And now the Navy would have to bring in uh, dredging equipment and dredge the harbor, which is very costly. And it's always better to, you know, to, to stop the runoff before it gets into the, you know, before you have to dredge in the harbor. Am I right? Absolutely. Um, this is a proactive um, project. Uh, we want to avoid things like uh, compensatory mitigation costs and whatnot. We want to address the issue before it gets um, worse. And uh, the program is just a really great opportunity to foster relations and um, you know, leverage, leverage funding from folks and, and build that relationship and partnership um, and maintain, um, I think, land stewardship within the island of Oahu. Yeah, you know, if you were on some remote uh, island in the South Pacific, um, you know, you wouldn't have the issue of people creeping up to the fence, you know, of, of development creeping up to the fence and, and having these, um, you know, negative effects on the land and the watershed. Um, but, but uh, you know, I think underlying the whole thing, underlying our discussion today is that Oahu and Hawaii are very important to the military. And the military wants to, you know, improve its political posture, its social posture, you know, its commercial industrial posture, posture with the state and the county and everybody around because it wants to preserve the, what are you going to call it, strategic, um, uh, strategic benefit of having Pearl Harbor exactly will where Pearl Harbor is. Uh, uh, I'm sure the Navy does not want to leave for a variety of strategic reasons. And so if you, uh, if you find you're in a situation in a, in a crowded, you know, 1.3 million people state, and you want to stay there, this is the kind of thing you have to do. Uh, I'm sure as a political scientist, you see this very clearly. Um, but talk to me about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're spot on with that. Um, we need to find a way to um, collectively exist and work together um, on the island. Uh, Pearl Harbor is located in a strategic location, as you mentioned. It's vital to for Pearl Harbor um, to be here to um, ensure national security for um, our country. Um, and we recognize that we're a part of this community. We're honored to be a part of this community. And we wanna do our best to, to be good neighbors and to be good land stewards. Um, because we know that so many residents on island have direct and indirect ties to the military here in Hawaii. You know, land stewardship is, is increasingly important in Hawaii, whether it's, um, you know, a, a, along the fence of uh, Pearl Harbor or anywhere, <clears throat> whether it's, um, you know, um, this watershed or any other part of the state. And, uh, you know, and people uh, on the mainland and everywhere, they see photographs of those beautiful valleys, like the photograph you showed of, a, you know, a, uh, of a, of a of a, a special watershed area. Um, and I think we forget that the more people, the more human activity in a given place, which is so beautiful, uh, the more damage there is. And it's, it's not just um, along the fence or involving the fence. It's the whole state, really, we have to. So you're actually setting a standard, I think. You're setting a standard. Do we have to care about this? Because if we don't do this, we collectively, that is federal and state governments, if we don't do this, the land will, will suffer. Um, and I think it's a leadership thing because uh, you know, if the federal government does this, if you do um, this kind of project, uh, then you're really making a statement uh, to state government and to everybody in the state is, you guys all have to get involved in land stewardship. We cannot afford to lose the, the aside from the people, the most valuable resource and asset that the state has. It's so easy for us 
become a, what do you want to call it, a, a place where the land hasn't been watched, it hasn't been cared for. Um, so what kind of feedback do you get in general for stewardship? Do people come up to you on the street, Susie, and say, wow, thank you for doing this. This is, <laughs> this is really important to all of us. Is, are you getting recognition for that? Uh, well, I think word about this project is, is just starting to get out at the local level. Um, but I'm just excited to be a small piece of it. And um, it's it's a project that I think is doing good things, like you said. Um, it, it's, it, it, it'll help to maintain that beautiful landscape of Hawaii, um, that lush green forest um, and those beautiful views that you want to see whether you live here or visit here. You bet. So um, I want to tell you a story before I ask you for your uh, summary and, and, and takeaway points for people. So, you know, there's some great movies out these days. And in the time of staying at home, you know, COVID, you watch the movies. And there are movies beyond violence and vengeance and Pulp Fiction. There were actually very valuable movies. And one of the movies I was watching just last night, the serial on Netflix, is called Alone. This has been around for a while, um, but uh, I hadn't seen it. And, and it, it, it involves a group of 10 people uh, that were dropped off in disparate places around the Pacific Northwest and in, in Canada, Alaska, what have you, uh, and asked to stay for as long as they could alone. And they were given cameras to document how it went. And they have very, very few tools and supplies and, and food with them. They got to got to make it by themselves. And the land is so incredibly beautiful in all of these remote areas. And you say to yourself, how long will this last? Mm -hmm. um, how long will these exquisite views and this, this um, you know, fantastic nature how long will it be able to survive in the face of, of, of the human onslaught and climate change? And uh, that's what it's about. And, uh, you know, if you have a chance, watch it it's alone, because it, it makes you understand exactly how precious all of this is. You know? But um, and, and so it must be very gratifying to do what you do. And I do want your job. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, give, give us a takeaway, Susie Fogg. Um, tell us what you want us to remember about this discussion, about your projects with uh, Repi, and I'll say that again for the final exam, readiness and environmental um, protection. Integration. 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 Um, what do you want us to remember? What do you want us to carry away from this discussion? Um, I think the key word is partnership. Um, it's a willing partnership between the DOD um, and its partners. And it's, it's a win-win, you know, it's mutually beneficial, um, not just for the DOD, but for its partners. They have just as much of a vested interest in pursuing particular projects um, that we have. So it's really working, working hand in hand for something that is, um, I think, the greater good. And then um, additionally, I just want to stress that for this program, the DOD, we're not dictating the terms. Um, we're really seeking the compatibility um, and the building of relationships uh, with our local people and communities. And we're just really, really grateful that for this opportunity that exists and for um, the local people to just work with us. And we hope to continue um, working with them in the future. Um, and we're really open to creative projects and opportunities and ideas. So I look forward to um, people bringing that to the table. That's great. And I would like to talk to you again about other projects down line, because I think this is a really a, a wonderful example of cooperation and caring. Um, Susie Fong doing repis all over town. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jay. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.